The gulags have gone down in history as brutal and horrific places where millions were sent inside the Soviet Union. They were places where there was a great degree of suffering and many people never came out, such was the harsh conditions. They operated from the 1920s up until after Stalin's death and at their height, each gulag camp held between 2,000 and 10,000 prisoners and there were hundreds of labour camps. The brutal treatment of prisoners often led to large-scale deaths through disease, starvation, exhaustion and even inside some of the gulags, many were executed. They were an effective way of Stalin ensuring he had little dissent within the Soviet Union. They were used to strike fear into the heart of the population. Many who were sent to the gulags believed they would rather just have been shot immediately by the NKVD rather than experiencing life inside them. So join us today as we look at the brutal executions inside of Stalin's gulags. And remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The gulag was first established in 1919, within two years there were 84 camps that were opened. They were set up initially by Lenin, however it was in the rule of Joseph Stalin that they were expanded to a huge extent. Stalin saw the forced labour camps as an effective way of boosting industrialisation in the Soviet Union and as a way of accessing valuable resources such as coal and timber. It was seen as a symbol of repression within the Union and the prisons were meant to receive prisoners that received a prison sentence longer than three years. Prisoners who had a shorter sentence were to stay inside the normal prison system. The first group of prisoners who found themselves at the camps were common criminals and also prosperous peasants known as kulaks. Stalin by late 1929 began to pursue a policy of de and he wanted to wipe the social class completely out. These were supposedly wealthy and were considered to have been capitalists by the state. This policy and collectivisation forced peasant farmers to give up their individual farms and to join collective farming schemes, and the kulaks who revolted against the fact they were required to give up their farms often found themselves sent to the gulags. The kulaks were oppressed, and in four months 60,000 were sent to the camps, and 154,000 had been driven out of the Soviet Union altogether, but the numbers of displaced kulaks grew into the millions. The huge relocation process of transporting people to the gulags gave Stalin a free forced labour workforce who could be used for many different projects, such as building railway infrastructure and roads. By 1932, the gulags had around 200,000 prisoners, but within three years, the number had quadrupled. 1.5 million people in 1941 were found imprisoned inside them, and this caused a huge strain on resources, such as food and clothing. Stalin is associated with the word purge, and he sought to execute and imprison anyone who dissented against him. His largest attack on the population, the Great Purge, was carried out by the NKVD, and they saw a huge action against the people. It's estimated that during this, 1.2 million people were killed by NKVD firing squads and executioners, but also that well over 100,000 people were killed inside the gulags, who were sent there as a result of the purge. The prison system was a way of dealing with those dissenters, and it was even used during the Second World War. As war broke out in Europe, 1.5 million were inside the camps, but following the Soviet invasion and annexation of the Second Polish Republic, scores more people were sent there. Also, when the Soviet Union occupied countries, such as Latvia and Estonia, large numbers of the civilian population were arrested and regardless of their ethnic origin, were sent to the gulags. During the conflict, many Nazi soldiers and officers also found themselves inside the camps after the war broke out. It's estimated that over 50,000 Germans died inside of Soviet-run camps, but after Stalin's death, they began to be closed down. But what was life really like inside of them? The working and living conditions inside of the camps varied over time, and also differed on a number of different things. It depended on the location and climate of the area where it was found, and also if there were other events affecting the camp. For example, during World War II, shortages were noted inside the gulags, as supplies were diverted for the war effort. Also, the type of crime that a prisoner had committed was noted to have had a bearing on the treatment they allegedly received, and also the type of work they did. It's said that political prisoners were given the worst work. Different camps had different expectations and rules. For example, in one, in Buapolum, 
there were 3,000 non-political prisoners who were lightly guarded, housed in beds with mattresses and pillows, and were also allowed to watch movies. But other camps housing criminals and political prisoners were kept on lockdown a large amount of the time, and guards patrolled with machine guns and were unafraid of shooting prisoners if needs be. Most survivors say the same thing though, and talk of the horrific conditions. It was said that medical care provided was substandard, and that there was a rhythm to daily life, doing the same things each day. Accidents regarding the work were common, as were injuries, and there was a disparity between the amount of food prisoners were given, and the work they were doing. Many were worked to death, and were starved completing jobs such as mining, and often diseases such as scurvy and dysentery were common. The weather and conditions of many of the camps led to workers perishing in the freezing cold inside of the harsh Russian winters. Many men suffered with frostbite and many froze to death as they were provided with insufficient winter clothes. One survivor wrote of his time, in the cattle car no provision had been made for the Siberian cold. There was no light source in the dark, we had to take turns sleeping, it was crowded. There wasn't enough food, we didn't have enough water. Add to this all the swearing, the quarrels, sometimes fistfights and even thefts. When I came down with angina, our group leader could not get a doctor for me. They used us for work in the camps, we hauled firewood. I was sent outside the camp to work only twice. It was hard to walk through snowstorms, dressed in the clothes that you remember, to cut the wood in them, and to haul logs without any gloves. The guards were strict, we melted and drank snow, for as long as there was any as we did not have enough water. At one point there wasn't an infirmary. Even when I had the flu and the fever, I could not get excused from work. I'm drawing on my last reserves of strength, given my health, I am doomed. In some camps, prisoners were only allowed to send one letter a year, and they were not allowed to have pictures of their family. If a prisoner worked hard, they would sometimes be released early, but the conditions claimed many lives. It was said that amongst the prisoners, there are some so ragged and lice-ridden that they pose a danger to the rest. These prisons have deteriorated to the point of losing any resemblance to human beings. Lacking food according to prisoners, some eat rats and dogs. The authorities overseeing the camps could not care less about the conditions of the prisoners, and it was noted that after Operation Barbarossa and the German invasion of the Soviet Union in 1941, the conditions inside the camps got a lot worse. This caused a reduction in rations and medical supplies, and because of this, many more prisoners died. The tools that prisoners were given to perform their jobs were often very poorly made, and were very simple, which led to work becoming more difficult than it needed to be. Also, there was no safety equipment, making work even more dangerous. Some, for example, had to mine for copper, using their bare hands, scraping away the dirt. Prisoners would also often cut their hands with their axes, or burn them inside of stoves to just try and avoid work and get a break. The working day was incredibly long, and up to 14 hours, and if workers did not complete their quota, they were then given less food. The barrack buildings, as mentioned, were also very overcrowded, especially as the numbers at the camp swelled, and violence between inmates was common. Another inmate wrote of the hard work, Sometimes you drag yourself along the path to the train car, with a cross tie across your shoulder one that is very heavy and made of wood. You are drenched in sweat, your heart beats as if it's about to jump out of your chest. You breathe so heavily, you start to wheeze, like an overheated horse, and you began to think, let my legs buckle, you'll fall, and the cross tie will come crashing down on you from above, and that will be the end. No more suffering. Everything will end forever. So some even contemplated ending their lives, such was the tough work. The toughness of the work led to scores of deaths inside the camps, and it was believed that once you went inside the gulags, you would never come out. With regards to executions specifically, those who caused trouble or rose up suffered a predictable fate. Any misbehaviour or sabotage was met with the same sentence, death where guards would simply just shoot the prisoners with their rifles. There were more sadistic guards than others who would shoot prisoners, but the main aim was to force the prisoners into completing work which would please Stalin and benefit the whole of the Soviet Union. Executions would have been carried out by NKVD officers and executioners, or most probably guards, who were there to ensure that as much productivity was occurring as possible. The true executions that occurred inside the gulags came from the virtual death sentences handed out to the people sent there, 
due to the labour conditions and the conditions of the gulags as the camps. With regards to the number of people killed inside the gulags, it's been estimated that between 2.3 million and 17.6 million perished inside of them. It was estimated that the gulags had six times higher than average mortality rates than anywhere in the Soviet Union, and some were even higher than that. The number of actual people killed, it's believed, will never be found out, as more conservative estimates guess a number at between 2.3 million. There were 1.6 million death certificates officially handed out by the Soviets following the passing of a prisoner during the operations of them, and in particular in the war years, and specifically 1942 and 1943, it was said that the mortality rate inside the camps was as high as 25%. For every four prisoners inside the system, one would die within that year. The true horrors of the gulags were uncovered long after they ceased to be used. It's only following the fall of the Soviet Union that the truth has come out regarding them, but it's likely that the huge scale of operations will never be fully uncovered. The system provided cheap labour for the Soviets, and it's mostly believed that they had a rather insignificant effect on the economy, as the workers who were poorly equipped and malnourished could not provide effective production results. The true executioners inside of the gulags were those who were in control of the conditions inside, and possibly it's believed that the true executioners were those higher up inside the NKVD who oversaw them. Their disregard for the lives of prisoners was a real death sentence, with the execution of prisoners being brought on not always by gunshot, but by the terrible conditions at the camps. The incredibly cold winters, a lack of suitable clothing, brutally difficult work, insufficient tools, an alarming lack of food and water, all acted as the gallows or the executioner's block for the prisoners of the gulags. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.